nerds, what's up? So I gave Malazan another chance after 10 years. And you may be wondering why it needed a second chance. We'll get to that. But I reread this book and I have the brave yet controversial opinion that it's really, really good. I'm kidding, obviously. This is one of the most respected fantasy series, which is one of the reasons I wanted to give it a second chance in the first place. Ended up really loving it. 4.5 out of 5. Really excited to continue reading it. But today I want to talk about why I needed to give it a second chance in the first place, what I thought of it, who my favorite characters were, what themes I loved, and just overall talk about the Malazan journey that I am starting in our year 2023. One thing I'm kind of interested in if you are a giant Malazan fan is I haven't gone into the online fandom for this series at all. So I know none of the regular takes or none of the things everyone kind of as a con fandom con has a consensus on. So I'm really curious while you watch this video, if you guys can tell me if I have any hot takes that the fandom does not share, or if I like mostly have said things that the fandom agrees on as a whole, that's something I'd be really interested in. So let's get into it. I think it's really important to talk about why I needed to give this book a second chance in the first place. Like you might be wondering if I hated it the first time I read it, but really what happened is about a decade ago, I was making the transition between reading YA fantasy and adult fantasy. I don't know if at the time I realized I was directly making that transition. I was just slowly moving away and realizing I was kind of over those kind of stories and wanting to move into adult fantasy. So the first adult fantasy I read was actually the entire Wheel of Time. And then after that, I found Brandon Sanderson through that. So I read a bunch of Brandon Sanderson and I had read a little bit of like Brent Weeks and the King Killers Chronicles. And at that point, I just ended up going to a used bookstore and browsing. You know, this was before I was on any sort of internet fandom. So I wasn't looking for recommendations or reviews. I really was just going in completely blind and Gardens of the Moon is what I picked up there. And my husband was like, oh, I think I've heard of that. Like, I think it's famous. And I was like, oh, okay, it's famous and people like it. Then I'll just grab it and read it. I, I went in completely blind. I had no idea what it was about and I read it. And the funny thing is I actually did enjoy it the first time I read it. I just thought I was too stupid for the series. <laughs> like I didn't have any reason to lie that I enjoyed it because I wasn't even on Goodreads. Like I didn't know that people like loved this. I remember turning to my husband being like, well, I really liked that. I don't think I understood anything that happened. <laughs> and I just, I literally was like, I'm too stupid for this series. So I better just stop while I'm ahead and just kind of leave it be. Now, fast forward many years to when I got into the online fandom and on booktube and really started to talk to people about Malazan. I started realizing that being confused in Malazan is a perfectly normal experience and it's totally okay to feel that way. And because of that, I've been eager to want to retry it since I really just one, like to know why some of our most famous series are there and famous, I like to read them. And two, because I sincerely, the more I heard about it, think I'm gonna enjoy the series. So that's kind of my background. It wasn't that I didn't enjoy it the first time. I just thought I was too dumb. The other thing I want to talk about is what I remembered about the book, because obviously that might change my second read. And I want to say, like, I actually remembered nothing. I remembered a few names, like for whatever reason, Whiskey Jack is a name really stuck in my head. And I remembered a couple of plot points from the first half of the book, like a couple things gave me deja vu. But honestly, I did not remember anything that couldn't technically be on the back of the book, like or in a blurb. I remembered no spoilers. I remembered no outcomes. So I do almost consider this like a first read through. Like I really don't feel like I knew anything. It wasn't less confusing because I had read it before. Like I did not remember almost any details. Okay, so we gotta address like, was it confusing this time? And the weird thing is I didn't find this book confusing at all. And I, I've kind of thought about this and I really don't think it's cause it was my second read through. What I think is that I've just had a decade of reading fantasy since the first time I tried. I have read hundreds and hundreds of fantasy books since the first time I tried Gardens of the Moon and now. And truthfully, I'm just, I didn't realize it, but clearly I've gained skill in knowing what kind of details I need to hold on to, what details I need to let go, what details it's okay for me not to understand right now and kind of just keep reading. Like I realize I'm just better at it. I'm better at keeping more characters in my brain. I'm better at keeping plot points and not worrying about the larger picture until I need to. And so that was kind of fun to realize like I guess reading a lot of fantasy just kind of makes you more skilled in reading fantasy. So honestly, didn't it feel confusing to me? Yes, does it feel like a really, intense world that has a lot of world building. Do I think I probably missed a lot of things that I would catch after I read the whole series when I know more? Yeah, of course. But none of those things influenced my enjoyment. Like it didn't feel confusing as a first read through. So I enjoyed that a lot. Okay, let's actually get into what I loved about the book. 
Now for Gardens of the Moon, I just didn't remember that this was such a character driven story or maybe I didn't have the words at the time, but like the characters, I fell in love with so many of the characters, which I guess I wasn't expecting. I don't know the last time I read a book where this many characters were competing for my favorite character. Like I liked so many of them. Just the way Erickson writes is so full. He really makes characters feel 3D. So let's get into my top five characters. Number one is Tattersail. I don't think this is a hot take because when I said this on my Instagram review, everyone in the comments was like, yeah, Tattersail, fire emoji. So I think everyone really loves Tattersail. I love her. It's kind of hard to pinpoint why. One of the things I think I like about her is I've talked a lot about uh, the strong female character on my channel. I loved Tattersail because she's everything I talked about in that video when I talked about the strong female character about like how to do it right. She is extremely powerful, she's extremely respected, but she doesn't fall into this trap of that that's all she gets to be. She felt like such an interesting person. She's been around for so long and she has all this power, but she's also really afraid and uncertain. And I just, it made her feel really real to me. I also loved that whole plot line of her being like, oh, this is just like a side fling, like I don't really care. And then he dies and then she kind of realizes, well, I was lying to myself. I don't know, the whole thing just felt really full and I just really attached to her as a character, which is kind of a bummer. I have a feeling I'm probably not gonna see her again for a while, but yeah, Tattersall is for sure my favorite. Hey, number two is Quick Ben. I just love a powerful character and Quick Ben's energy was so interesting to me and he was a part of probably one of my favorite scenes of Gardens of the Moon, which is when he goes in and tricks um, Shadow Throne. Wait shadow you know the death god he goes in and tricks him and as he's leaving he's like ha ha actually i was the priest and then he's freaking out i loved that scene so much and yeah i always like a powerful character quick ben was really interesting i also you know colin didn't make my list just because there's so many good characters but i did love them as a duo i think they played off each other really well and i always like to see that kind of friendship so yeah i loved quick ben my third favorite character was whiskey jack Again, it's very interesting because I feel like Whiskey Jack is, I would say a pretty typical fantasy character in that he is a very respected and powerful leader, but Erickson just breathes so much new life into that classic trope character because again, Whiskey Jack feels very full. It's hard not to be behind him. He's just trying to keep his team you know, together, doing best for his team doesn't want to deal with sorry and what she is. And it's kind of hard not to root for Whiskey Jack. Now, um, I'm cheating a bit going 3A Ralic. I couldn't, I couldn't do it to five characters. 3A, my favorite character is Ralic. I think Ralic functions the same way as Whiskey Jack just for our other team. I'm not gonna be able to say the city name. Drusian. Day three on the road to Shmimimim. It's been ages since we left Pyramimimim. As always, my companions and Carl are with me. I, you know, I love that leader character, that kind of figure that's keeping the whole team together. I really liked him. Again, really good assassin, kind of the scary assassin, but again, feels real, doesn't feel like a typical character. Same reason, my character, favorite character 3B, Perrin. I love the foreshadow when we see in the beginning where he's like, I'm gonna be this captain, I'm gonna be in the army, I'm gonna be all this. And then we get to see him years later where everyone who warned him that it wasn't gonna be what he thought, it wasn't what he thought. Just overall, those character arcs, all super good. Okay, my fourth favorite character may be the one that I wonder if is a hot take, but I'm gonna put Lorne here. I really liked Lorne. I liked her in the beginning. Again, a really strong presence as a leader. And then later everyone turns, like Pyron turns on her, but I'm like, she's just doing her job, you know? Like sure, she works, for the models on Empire, which probably isn't like the best thing to work for. Lacine doesn't seem that great of a person, but she's just making her way. She's really clever, you know, knows how to threaten you, knows what's going on. Doesn't seem to be mistreating people. Like I know Perrin like is really mad at her. So I'm kind of wondering what happened in those few years. Like, am I gonna find out more about that? But I was really fascinated by her and her story and finding out what happened in her childhood and her whole struggle at the end of the novel about, I'm just the adjunct now. I've killed off who Lauren used to be and now I just serve the Empress. I don't know, I was super into it. I thought she was a very fascinating character and I liked her a lot. And for number five, I am gonna put Sari in here. Sari, I just thought, again, a character that could fall so flat but ended up feeling very three-dimensional her being the rope, you immediately, I mean, you already get the foreshadowing. Like that's the coolest thing about this book, I think, is 
we know so much more often than the characters know on paper, but it's done in such a good way that it's fascinating to see it unfold. Like we clearly know something's wrong with Sari, we saw it happen. And we don't maybe know exactly what it was that happened, but getting to see the other characters, how they revolve around her and that discovery. And in the end, you know, the sweetness of how that woman gave her life to try to protect Sari. I, that whole arc was just fascinating. I felt like I hadn't read something like that before and I really liked it. I think people might be frustrated or mad that I didn't mention Rake. Look, Rake is a great character. I thought he was very interesting. One of the most interesting people on the page. I just wasn't necessarily like as emotionally connected to him as I was to the other characters, which is why he didn't make my top five. Still love him, still think he's very interesting. The whole Moonspawn thing is very interesting. I think that's the point though. Gardens of the Moon, the thing that impressed me the most is there wasn't a single viewpoint where I wasn't happy to be in it. Usually when I read high fantasy with lots of viewpoints, there's always that viewpoint you get to and you're like, mm, okay, can we like get through this viewpoint? Cause like, I just don't care. Never felt that with Gardens of the Moon. I was sincerely interested in every viewpoint. So I think that is a huge accomplishment, at least in my opinion, that Erickson has in Gardens is that I really just liked every character. Okay, let's talk a couple of themes or other things that I really liked about the book. One is I love luck as a theme. I've always liked luck as a theme, like in Wheel of Time, Matt's whole thing with luck was one of my favorite storylines. So Crocus with Open and being the coin bearer, loved it. Loved the rooftop scene. I just really like playing with luck and, and how that works and with Parin and his sword. Like, I loved that whole thing. I also really love it when gods are present and people in a fantasy setting. You don't get to see that a ton. And I like how involved we actually get to see the gods. Some are these dying gods and and we get a little glimpse into maybe how they work. I think it's belief in them that kind of gives them their power. And so I'm very interested to know more about that. And I like that as like, you know, we have these big players here and then we have the players here. And I like how that conflict is clearly going to get bigger and keep developing. So I really enjoyed that part of it. Something else I liked about the series is that it's just wildly magical. Now, I do love a scientific, detailed, intense magic system. I am a Sanderson fan. I like that. But <laughs> that being said, I sometimes miss when it's just something's just wild. Like this book is wild. Like you have a character whose soul goes into a marionette. <laughs> it's just wild, right? But it all feels very natural and just how the world is. And Erickson does just like, a super good job. I think the reason it works so well is that he has intense consequences for all of his characters. So yes, his characters are super powerful and they are doing very crazy, magical, powerful things and succeeding, but they also fail a lot. I was very stressed out for the characters. I was surprised like how often my heart was racing, wondering what was gonna happen. Cause I believed that Erickson would kill a character. I believed that they'd give them an intense consequence. That combination of this wild magic, but also intense consequences just works really well together. And I have a feeling that's something that's gonna be throughout the whole series. So I'm really excited to experience that. Okay, in conclusion, loved Gardens of the Moon. Super excited for Deadhouse Gates because I feel like I've heard a lot of people say that that's one of their favorites in the whole series. Here are my expectations going forward, not really knowing anything. Um, I expect to basically not see any characters from book one and book two. I, I think I've heard that, I've gotten the feeling that each book you might see characters kind of in the background, but it's gonna focus on other parts of the story. So I'm really interested to see if that happens. Really hope we see Tattersail again. I feel like her story's not done, but I wonder if it's going to be a while. Um, as far as the difficulty of it, the book is dense. I will give you that. Like it took me a lot longer to finish, not because I wasn't enjoying it, I loved it, but every sentence feels important. I was kind of thinking about this, like, you know, sometimes you're reading a fantasy and your mind wanders for like a paragraph and you jump back in and it doesn't matter. You don't need to reread the paragraph. I feel like in Malazan so far, I have to go back and reread the sentence or the paragraph. Like you really can't miss any of it because it's all important to the, to the overall story. So I do think it'll take a little bit longer to read these, but I'm excited for the journey I am unlocking. So I'm planning on trying to read as many of these this year as I can, potentially one a month is my goal. I think that might be ambitious, so I might not make it, but I will be reading a lot this year. I'm actually doing this as a buddy read with my friend Kyle from Read by Kyle. So we are planning on doing live shows for each book. So we'll do a Gardens of the Moon live show over on his channel sometime next month. 
And then for Dead House Gates, we'll be on my channel. So if you want to follow along, follow on our journey, finally diving in and exploring Malazan. I am very excited for it. Let me know in the comments below if you're a giant Malazan fan, what you thought about what I said. Did I have any hot takes in there? Or so far, I kind of am like with the fandom. Tell me what more I can expect. I want to hear from you guys. And as always, if you like these kind of videos, please like and subscribe. And if you want to see what I'm currently reading or my reviews for Malazan as we keep going first before my channel, you can follow me on Instagram at bookborn.reviews. I'll see you next time. Bye.